Welcome to Centaurus Stir Fry. Stir Fry here at Agaria. Hope you guys are having a good weekend or a good morning or a good night, whatever it is. For me, it's the weekend, so I'm sipping on this really sweet Daredevil pint glass. Filled with a uh, special elixir. Um, but today, we're going to be talking about my favorite, the, that I personally own, my top 10 favorite Spider Man comics. Okay, comics. Uh, for number one, it's going to be Spider Man number one. Look at that. Everyone's seen the cover, everyone knows it. Um, when I was a kid, this was such a big deal. I bought all three covers, and it was, uh, I think there's a chromium one too, but you know, the ones that were available in the stands, I bought all three of them. That was the first time for me. I had to get all three of them. I was uh, chasing variants at a very young age. I think we all were, because I think there's like millions of copies of this, but it's cool. And on the back, there's really sweet ads for uh, Contra and uh, Metal Gear. Some Nintendo games, really sweet. Um, not much, the story kind of stinks. Um, it was written and drawn by Todd McFarlane, not his, you know, he was testing the waters there, but man, um, beautiful cover, a classic, still to this day one of my favorite covers. And uh, it also kind of comes off one of my favorite storylines. I mean, this in this series, this little episode here, they uh, torment, they bring uh, back Craven in a weird way. And nothing, in my opinion, is, um, as far as Spider-Man goes, Craven's Last Hunt is awesome. When I read that, I was almost scared and weird, and I was just, I weirded out, I was just like, wow. It's pretty heavy at the time, so I loved that. Number two for me is going to be this, Spider-Man number 98. This is a drug issue. It was not approved by the comics code, as you can see. I hope you can see. A really awesome cover, too. Spider-Man slipping. You need to look at that great. Goblins kind of like talking, talking smack. Um, but I believe that the, the military approached Stanley about doing like a drug issue, raise awareness, whatever, and he was down with it. He did it. And I think there was like two or three parts of this. I know there's a lot of people out out there with a lot more knowledge than me. But when I bought this, um, I was really blown away by it, just because of the fact that it was kind of, it almost seemed like uh, controversial. There's no, there's, there was no code. I kind of noticed that pretty quickly. Um, but it's still here, and it's all beat up, and I almost got the sign by him, but and it's fine. It's a great cover, and it's a great topic. One of my favorite covers. It seems like we're on a cover thing here, because my third in my top ten list for me is, uh, Web of Spider-Man number one. Number one. Web of Spider-Man number one. This is like one of the best covers I've ever seen of Spider-Man, period. And one of the coolest covers ever. So I don't think this is like a high-value book, but if you ever see this thing for a reasonable price, pick it up because it's beautiful. Frame it. Throw it on the wall. It's awesome. In the, in the 90s, I was more of a spectacular Spider-Man fan. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here's another group. Amazing Spider-Man. Man, a nice and Spider-Man number 42. All right. This is uh, the first appearance of Mary Jane. At the end, this is where she says, "You know, hey, face it, Tiger. You hit the you hit the jackpot." Um, you know, and there's a lot of I know there's a lot of Spider Gwen fans out there, and a lot of Gwen Stacy fans. But for me, I mean, I grew up with Mary Jane, and I think she's like you know adorable. So it's really cool to have the first issue. And plus, he's always or the first appearance. And these ja you know these Jamesons, man, they are they are an annoying group of people. Classic villain, J. J. John James. Um, yeah. Okay. Next on the list is uh, Secret Wars number eight. Um, actually, uh, me and my wife go to a lot of conventions. We're used to, and uh, she snuck behind my back and got this signed by uh, Mike Zek and John Beatty. And she's got the little thing there in the back, and she surprised me with this. I didn't even know she did it. She was running around getting it signed behind my back. It was really cool. This is a Christmas gift. So that's and the cover is awesome too. Mike Zack, man. He's one of my favorite cover artists back then. It's pretty great. It's a book I always wanted, and it's just cool that she found... I guess she, I guess I spouted off and said that I wanted this at one point. And she did it. Freaking awesome. Oh. And then that's, at that same year, during Christmas, she also got me this. Now, <laughs> this, this is pretty amazing. Uh, amazing Spider-Man 300. Of course we all know. First appearance of Venom. Full appearance. Um... You know, it's got a tick or two, but it's it's not a bad copy at all. And this is a book that, as a kid, I always wanted this thing. I would actually go to comic book stores looking for this before I even knew what the heck I was talking about. Like, I was just obsessed with McFarlane, and I could never find this. And, you know, I would, like, buy all his back issues because I was obsessed with I even wrote him a letter at, at, like, 13 years old or whatever, wrote that guy a letter. He never responded. He probably couldn't read my handwriting. But I was so obsessed with his art because, I, you know, I used to draw a lot back then. I, was, I, was, I always wanted to be a comic book artist. And I always wanted this because this is, look at the cover. Uh, just, 
just the way he always drew Spider-Man like twisted up in a knot. It's like that's what he drew him. He's like in a knot, or you know, it's just he's all arms are everywhere, kind of like this tension. Close, but so I was always obsessed with that. And she actually bought this. Uh, I don't know what she paid, but I could believe it. This is something that I always wanted, and it was freaking cool. That was a hell of a Christmas, probably the best Christmas ever. So it's cool. Two black Spidey costumes and one Christmas. And then after that, we got the uh, the first appearance of uh, Carnage. Now, when I when I was when I was first reading and collecting Amazing Spider-Man, it was McFarlane's run was pretty much over with, and it was like near and somewhere in the middle. Larson was still doing it. Eric Larson, the guy who does, does Savage Dragon. And then after that, we got Mark Bagley, and I've actually got a really I, I love Mark Bagley artwork, especially the old stuff. I think he did a really good job in Ultimate. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. I love his new Warriors run, and I love this run too. And it's awesome. Um, I think Carnage is a really cool villain. One of these days, I hope they do him right because he's just a he's just a piece of crap. But it's really cool to have this. And I think I have a raw copy somewhere, but ugh, I don't know. I can't find my crap. When I buy things online, I just sometimes just do that. Another great villain. I got this fairly recently. This is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 238, the first Hobgoblin. I got this like maybe two years ago, maybe. Pretty sure. But uh, another great villain. Just, I mean, I when I was a kid, I used to have this weird like toy set. It was like Spider-Man. It was this big green goblin um, tank that had like choppers on it, and my aunt got it at a, like at an auction. And so you put Spider-Man in the and it came with two figures: Spider-Man and, uh, and a green goblin. You put Spider-Man in this chopper, and it eats Spider-Man. In the back, it poops out a flat cardboard. Spider-Man, like, he's flattened him out. And Green Goblin's, like, right on top. is really fun. So I always liked the way that Green Goblin looked. I thought it was fascinating, but... Fascinating character. And I still like William Defoe. But, uh, this... I don't know, when I, was, like, when I was a little older, and I was, like, in my... I don't know. Whatever. I don't know how old it was, but... Hobgoblin was just so much cooler for some reason. I love that dude. And this is an awesome cover. This is John Romita Jr., right? No, Senior and Junior. John Romita Senior and Junior cover. So... It's a really cool cover. Really awesome. Even though, okay, yeah, this is the first appearance of Punisher. Um, I got a crappy Punisher tattoo. It's it's on there. I think I might have told that story already, but it's it's on my arm. You know, applied by a prison needle, one needle, a single needle prison gun, whatever. Um, and to get this was a was a really big deal. This is a major deal. And I sold a lot of crap to get this. Um, it's seven point five, but I don't care. It could be a five or a two. Uh, Punisher, as a child and currently, is one of my favorite characters. I just like the idea of it, you know. I just like the idea of Frank Castle. So this is included. It's a pretty awesome cover too. It's like the thing that will never leave this collection. All this other crap will leave way before that. And this is just like not really included. This is the second appearance of Punisher, just because it's got a really cool cover. But the coolest part is the back. Look at that. <laughs> the coolest thing is, yeah, look who's smiling now. And it's really cool. You can fill this thing out. You can get a degree in accounting, business management, real estate, traffic and transportation, diesel mechanics, um, air conditioning, drafting, uh, drafting, computer programming. Even back in, when is this? 74, they had computer programming and law courses. And then you could get, you know, restaurant management or whatever. You know, look who's smiling now. That guy is smiling now. Yeah. Well, the older guys should have filled this thing out a long time ago. I wish I was still alive. Or I wish I was born when I had So I would have filled that out immediately. Alright, and one of the most... It's not the greatest book in the world. It's not... As, you know, my the books my wife got me are much more important. But uh, this is cool. This is my Stanley story. So here we go. We got Amazing Spider-Man 37. When was this? 66. Yeah, it's the first appearance of Norman Osborn. I had this, and I went. I went to a convention in Dallas, and uh, stood in line for uh, I think about four hours to get this signed by Stan Lee, and it, I was I was dead because after that I actually got a photo op with him, which was kind of a waste of money, but it was still cool. He was a pleasant guy, but what's cool about it is like you're waiting in line, and uh, you can't see him, and they got this curtain blocked off, and after about four hours, <laughs> you can see the top of this like go kart or like a golf cart pull up. You can see it with Stanley, and he would—he just, just sat there for another hour. But the coolest thing about it is just all the people's books. I mean, 
There was some people there that had like 10, like a stack of 10 of Spider-Man 300, even though Stanley had nothing to do with that. I brought one book with me, and I wanted to, you know, get something that he actually wrote. And, uh, but nothing against that. I mean, I should probably should have got that 300 signed by him. Um, but yeah, there were stacks of 300, stacks of, you know, Spider-Man number ones. And Tom McFarlane was actually at that one, too. But you had to, it was a weird lottery system for him. So I couldn't get uh, a signature by him. So later on, I had to just buy one. <laughs> but Waiting in Line was really cool. It was really fun. There's a lot of people just talking about Spider-Man, talking about all kinds of issues. And it was really fun. Everyone was just kind of showing, you know, each other what, they, what they're doing. And I just had this out on the open. And there was a guy right behind me, an older man, who... Uh, Actually, bought. He had an amazing fa uh, fantasy uh, fifteen. He had an amazing Spider Man one, and uh, he had him. He bought it. Said he bought him when he was a kid at, a, at like a drugstore, and they're all beat up, but they're oh, it was awesome. I, th I think I even took a picture of him, and I think he let me touch him. It was just cool. He was telling a story about like he just walked up there and bought him. He was all into it, and he's he liked to get him signed and probably graded and maybe like I don't know, get himself out of debt or pay for something. You know, he's an older gentleman. And it was just a really cool story, and it was fun talking to everybody. And but I did see a lot of Amazing Spider-Man 300s with the little blue tape, where to put where to put uh, Stanley's signature. I thought that's kind of insulting, but it does make a lot of sense because this signature is just like it's like black spaghetti, you know. It's it's not the greatest. I have one other signature by him that I just bought online, and it looks a lot better than that. But you know he's getting up there. Um, but the guy, in, okay. First, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. The coolest thing about this dude is he's actually really nice. Um, he charges a lot for signatures, but he's actually a really nice guy. Well, let me get to the point. Okay, so after three or four hours waiting in line, golf cart pulls up. You can't see him. You can just kind of see the top of his wig or whatever. And there's the desk, and he's got like 15,000 hand. He's got like a small uh, military, you know, army there with him, uh, keeping people from taking pictures. And when they finally open the curtains to let that dude out, he jumps up these stairs like Spider-Man himself. He, I've never seen. Um, like, what is he, like, 102 years old? And he just flew up there, like, faster than I could ever dream of. Dude, flew up there, he's like, you know, he's really fast when you're trying to get a free, uh, a free camera shot. He's not having it. So he jumps up there, super quick, and it was a really pleasant experience. It, you know, I was kind of like, I was probably like 20th in line or whatever. And we are getting up there, and it was cool. Still, just, again, like, the people around me are really fun and cool. And we get to the, we get to the end, and there's a the guy, you know, he's got like four or five dudes with like uh like you know uzis guarding him you know from you can't take any pictures or anything and uh, you can't touch him they tell you don't touch stanley oh, shit. don't touch stanley don't even look don't make direct eye contact with stanley <laughs> but, and you're thinking oh man stanley had your shoot i mean he's got this you know his army his royalty we we're waiting in line the guy right in front of me has i i didn't see that he wasn't talking to anybody he pulls out of his bag he pulls out like 25 books these aren't cheap signatures anymore. I think they might have been back in the day, but not anymore. Stanley does not give these things out for free. The guy pulls out like 20 something books, and Stanley, you know, at the age of, you know, 115 years old, is signing 25 signatures. And then, and then I have one book, and I'm behind this guy. I'm like, okay, here you go. But he actually puts it in a good place. It's just not real clear or anything, but at least he put it down here. He didn't cover up, you know, he didn't cover up anybody, you know. It looks good. He, good placement. I didn't have to tape it off or anything. And he was like, thanks. You know, I walked up. I was like kind of frustrated with the whole thing. But Stanley was like, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Like he waved at me. You know? He appreciated it. He's not a jerk. He's a legend. So anyway, that's that's my uh, rambling. That's my ten favorite Spider-Man books that I own. I don't own any of those number ones or billion dollar books. But I do have some really cool books. And I'm proud of them. And this is a... Uh, statue that I'm really proud of too. This is the uh, Sideshow Collectibles Premium Format, Amazing Spider-Man. One of the most crazy engineered pieces I've ever seen. Look at that. All that weight. I mean, I don't want to get into it. There's a lot of reviews out there for him, but um, this is a glorious piece. And I think it, I think, you know, if you're really, you know, if you're a Farland fan or if you're a Bagley fan, you know, I mean, just kind of, they did such a great job of like, kind of riding that line in between so many great artists. I think it has more of a 90s vibe, personally, but I freaking love this thing. Um, I think that's going to be all for uh, this episode. Um, does anybody else have really cool issues or stories? What's their favorite story arc, I wonder? Because for me, it's still Craven's Last Hunt. And Hunt Craven, Craven, Craven's Last Hunt and probably Maximum Carnage is up there. But, uh, oh, man, I forgot. One of my favorite issues ever is the Ultimate Spider-Man 160 
the death of ultimate version of uh, Peter Parker. Now, if you ask me, that's how a hero dies. That was some of the saddest crap I ever read. I mean, if you, if you saw how he died in Infinity War, that just wasn't a hero to me. He was kind of whining. But if you read Ultimate Spider-Man, which is a great run, Michael uh, Michael Bendis, man, when he dies at 160, tears. You know? Really sad stuff. So I definitely recommend that. That's one of my favorite runs ever. Underrated. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of uh, Centauri Stir Fry. Tears and all. You guys have a good night. Uh, remember, Maggie was right, and we'll see you next time. Crank.